Now it's time to learn about time travel. It really is possible. That's why I like this one. What do we want? Time travel. When do we want it? Irrelevant. This is actually mind blowing. This is so cool. So this is really how it works. Time travel is possible in a way. And I'll show you this. So first of all, we need to learn about what's called proper time. We're going to call that delta T zero. That's what we're going to say that is proper time. And proper time is the time that's measured by the frame where the ev uh, events happen at the same place. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's say you're sitting in your spaceship and you're flying around, then you're measuring proper time because you're the one moving around. So those are the events, maybe like you leave and you come back. Well, if you're sitting in your plane or your ship, then obviously leaving and coming back, everything zooms by you. Everything happens at the same place for you. We call that proper time. So let's look at this equation that has to do with the time travel. So first of all, we call it time dilation. And in this sense, you can go forward in time only relative to someone else who didn't move. So that's why it's relative, right? That's why we always call it relativity. So now how does that actually work? Well, you need to move super fast. And when I say super fast, I mean like some sort of speed that's sort of comparable to the speed of light. You know, maybe it's some you know fraction of the speed of light or something. And you have to go for a long time. And in this way, your own time that you measure will be different than the time of the people who didn't move. And in that sense, you've gone forward in time relative to them. So let's look at this equation and how it goes. It goes like this, delta t equals gamma times delta t zero. Here's the equation, it's in your data booklet. Okay, so what are these variables? Well remember, t is going to be your time measured by the stationary frame here. This here is gonna be your proper time, uh, we can call this here delta t like this, and then Lorentz factor will be gamma. And don't forget what the gamma actually is. You can always look it up but it goes like this. It's 1 over 1 minus v squared over c squared, and this bottom part here is in the square root. So then in case you need it, there you go. Now the time is measured, sometimes it's in seconds, sometimes it's in days or years, so they're going to be a little bit more uh, loose with this. That's just because this is just a number, and so it doesn't matter. If you measure this in days, for example, then this will also be in days. You know, if you measure this years, this will be in years. We tend to use years pretty often just because this is the only time when it sort of makes some sense. But let's actually do an example. So let's work with time travel and actually calculate something. So here we have a spaceship and you're flying in it at a speed of 90% the speed of light, so 0.9c, and you're flying for 10 years and all that is measured by someone on Earth. Now after those 10 years, you return to Earth. So in other words, people on Earth really will just have waited for 10 years. Okay, so they say goodbye to you and then you come back 10 years later, hello. And like I said, as they measure your speed as 90% the speed of light here, so 0.9c. The question is, how long will the journey have taken for you on the spaceship? And this is the thing, is that your journey will have taken differently than these 10 years. It won't be 10 years. So in that sense right here, you're going to see you're, there's going to be an offset here. Now, if you're sitting in your spaceship, like while you're actually sitting there, and you look at your watch, nothing will seem really weird. Your time will still tick by perfectly normally for you. It's just that when you land, you won't think 10 years have gone by like everybody else did. And that's the cool part. That's why it's relative. In this sense right here, you're going to go forward in time relative to those who didn't travel at 0.9c. So let's go ahead and calculate some of these things in here. Well, first we've got to figure out what the variables are. What do we actually know? Well, first of all, we are. what are we looking for? How long will you think the journey took? Just so you know that here we want, let's see, who's measuring proper time? Is it the people on Earth or is it, the uh, or is it you on the ship? Well, the ship traveling and moving back again, uh, that's you on the spaceship. In other words, if you're just sitting on your spaceship, nothing really happened. You sat there, you left Earth, goodbye, and you came back to Earth, hello. Everything happened at the same place. In other words, we want delta T zero. We want the proper time. So in other words, you on the spaceship, you're measuring the proper time, and that's what we actually want to find out. So that's this. Well, if that's the case, then what do we know? Well, we know that uh, delta T, for example, is 10 years. Okay, and we know that v, the speed, is actually equal to, let's say, 0.9c. So let's go ahead and just use this equation. And it goes like this. Remember, it goes delta t equals gamma times delta t0. So if I want to solve for delta t0 then, well, I'm just going to say then that delta t0 is just equal to delta t over gamma. 
And that's it. That's all I have to do. So I'm just looking for this right here. And let's see. Now, I know delta t is just 10 years, but I don't know gamma. So off to the side, I'm going to just go ahead and calculate gamma. So remember, gamma was equal to uh, 1 over 1 minus v squared over c squared. All this right here is in a square root. So in this case, then, if I do this, I've got gamma equals 1 over 1 minus, and I've got 0 0.9 c and all that is squared, all that over c squared, and this right here is in the square root. Okay, if I keep going then, let's see, I've got 1 over 1 minus, and 0.9 times 0.9, well, that's 9 times 9. That's uh, 0 0.81 c squared over c squared, which is, those are canceling out, by the way, and don't forget, that is in the square root. Okay, I keep going then, so that means gamma equals 1 over, now what's 1 minus 0.81? That's going to be uh, 0 0.19, and that's going to be square rooted. So I probably need to do this on my calculator. So I get out my calculator and say what's 1, uh, whoops, sorry, I'll actually make a nice fraction here just so it looks pretty, so 1 over, and I'll do the square root of 0 0.19. And I end up with this number, so 2.2941. Okay, so I'm gonna use that number right there, and I'm gonna shove it into this one, because now I know that answer. So that means then that I have delta t zero. In other words, the proper time is equal to delta t, which again is 10 years, over this 2.2941 dot dot dot. Let me do that on my calculator. So I'm going to say, hey, what is 10 over the answer? And I end up with 4.35889. Well, if I write that answer to two significant figures, which is what I'm allowed, that's the least that I have here, um, it's going to be, let's see, it's going to be 4.4. .4, and keep in mind the units, it's going to be years. So what does this mean? This means that you will have only measured 4.4 years elapsing. Remember, everybody else went, uh, went ahead and aged 10 years. So quite literally, you have gone forward in time, right? Because everybody else aged 10 years, you've gone forward in time by, let's say, 5.6 years. You've time traveled 5.6 years compared to everybody else. Come on, how cool is that? So that's really what happened. In that sense, you've gone forward in time. You've gone, you know, traveled forward by 5.6 years compared to everybody else. That makes me so excited. Mind blown. <laughs> that's how I felt. When I first learned about this stuff, honestly, I was just like, what? And this is really how it works. Isn't that cool?